DaVinci Resolve 18 was just released, at least in beta format, and I could not be any more excited. There's a lot that went into this update, including a lot of quality of life improvements and updates to the processing within the Fusion page. But of course, I'm very interested in a lot of the effects that they added, and I'm sure you are too. So what are we doing here? Let's go ahead and take a look at those. One of the coolest effects that I saw that they announced, which I think I personally get a lot of use out of, is the depth map. Essentially what this does is map out your scene, so anything close to the camera would be in white, and anything far away would be black. Of course, anything in between those two points would be varying shades of gray, depending on how far away it is. But you can see here, even while I'm using the faster option as opposed to the better option, it does a pretty good job of determining who the subject is and the farther parts of the scene. The nice thing about this effect is that you can adjust the areas that you want affected. And the reason you'd want to apply an effect like this is to have different parts of your scene be affected differently. I can do a separate tutorial about this. If you're interested in seeing that, leave a comment below. I think it's doing an incredibly good job. You can see on the building on the left here, which is not that far in the scene, and also the car, it's varying shades of gray. One of the effects that I appreciate that they added was the fast noise effect. Here, we're looking at smoke, and it includes other presets. The next one that we're looking at here is mist. From there, the next preset that we can look at is water surface. The one after that is river, which is similar to water surface, but maybe a little bit more aggressive. And the one after that is heat haze, which is similar to something that you'd see come off the ground on a hot day. So without needing to go into fusion, you can apply the fast noise effect and then have any of these effects right at your fingertips. Another cool effect that they added, which was sort of something you could work around in Fusion, is the surface tracker. So for example, what we can do is track this person's shirt, including the wrinkles within the shirt. And then we can take a logo or any type of image, and then we can track that right on top of their shirt, and it will move along with the shirt. This effect has four items at the top. So the first one would be bounds, which is the area that you want to focus on. Then from there, we'll create a mesh. As mentioned, in this case, with the shirt, it's following the creases within the shirt. We would go to the next button on the right, which is track. And then from there, we would go to result. In this case, I used the DaVinci Resolve logo and I use sliders to get that into position because initially your logo won't be sized correctly, but you don't necessarily have to use sliders. You can use this interactive canvas and you can make the adjustments yourself. As you'll notice here, I'm dragging these sides around and it's making an adjustment to my logo. You can't see it at the moment because it's not within our bounds, but I'll take that and drag it right in our window and you'll see what I mean about having to adjust it to a specific size. But once you have it in place, it will follow the mesh and it will follow the track so that it looks as if it's on that t-shirt. Another small update that they did, which I think was a nice touch, was animate on every refresh when it comes to the film grain. Whereas if you applied film grain to your footage before, you couldn't really tell what it was doing unless of course you played through the footage. But here, if I make sure that option is selected and then I'll make an adjustment to my gamma down on the curves, you'll notice how the grain changes, which is nice so that you don't have to make an adjustment, play through the footage, and then continue that process back and forth. And then of course, there's a proxy generator. So once you click on this, which is a separate program from DaVinci Resolve, it will ask you where you want to have a watch folder. And what that means is that any files that you put in there, so the footage that you put in there, will automatically have a proxy created. Once you have everything set up the way you want, you click on start, and again, Anytime that something goes into that folder, a proxy will be created for it. And not only that, but you can run different instances of the proxy generator if you think that's something that will help your workflow. Something else that they improve within the program itself is how you implement those proxies. If we come up to playback and then proxy handling, you can choose to disable proxies if you have no interest in using those and just want to use the original footage. You can prefer proxies or you can prefer the original footage. And that's to say if you're collaborating with someone and you don't happen to have either one of those, it will actually use whatever you have. But in general, if you happen to have those proxies and you put prefer proxies, that's what it would use. The last effect, which I'm really excited about, which is not available yet in the first release of the beta software, is the object tracker. And if you're familiar with After Effects, this would be similar to the Roto Brush. But from what I've seen, this is the Roto brush on steroids. Blackmagic is using AI in this case, and it's doing a really good job of determining what object you selected and tracking it through the entire scene. And that means even if it orients itself differently or the lighting changes, it will still know that that's the same object. And again, track it through the entire scene. 
I can't wait for this particular one to become available. And if you're interested in seeing a video about it, let me know down in the comment section below. Another exciting addition that they added was cloud collaboration. They did have collaboration before, but it was more within a network if you were at the same location. But now if you're an editor and you have a colorist in a different location, you can work on the same DaVinci Resolve project at the same time. This is actually pretty cool. Me and another YouTuber were testing this out and you can chat with them directly within DaVinci Resolve. And if they're in a timeline or a specific bin, it will show you that they're in that bin. It prevents people from working on the same timeline at the same time, which makes sense because it could get a little bit confusing with everybody working on the same thing. But once someone makes an update, it will actually tell you that and it will show something in the corner that you can click on, refresh your window, and then you'll see the updates that they made. This of course is a lot better than trying to export an EDL or an XML and sharing files back and forth. If you're curious to learn more about this, I'll put a link in the description below. So all of that to say that this release looks as if it's going to be even more exciting than the last one. So if you're curious to learn any of these new effects, or if there's anything that you want to check out within the newest version, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and you'll see a lot more videos like this. Go ahead and take a look at one of the videos on screen right now, and I'll see you in the next one.